Welcome to the Thrive Kitchen. I'm Chef Todd. Man, am I excited for our bakery line. Now look, last convention, which was almost a year ago, we launched a bakery line that I know a ton of you, a lot of you, have thoroughly enjoyed as much as me. So what we wanted to do was review the bakery line. We launched a classic cookie dough mix, the best chocolate chip cookie you've ever had, a sugar cookie, a white country dough mix, bread dough mix, and a whole wheat dough mix. Now these are fantastic. We already had brownie, macaroon, and a 10 grain pancake, which gives us seven delicious bakery items. But guess what? Now's the time that we've changed our formulas or enhanced our formulas in the brownies, the macaroons, and the 10 grain pancakes. They're now all non-GMO. Guess what? We now have a gluten-free bakery item. Our macaroon mix is now gluten-free. We've also improved our nutritionals. We've increased nutritional value in all of these formulas to enhance your Thrive Life at home. So we're gonna get it, we're gonna get started in the kitchen cooking a whole bunch of recipes using our bakery line. And I just want to tell you, this bakery line has been fantastic in my home as an everyday staple from the Thrive Kitchen. We use the breads, we use the cookies, we use the desserts, the brownies, the macaroons, all the time. And it's such a benefit to us because we don't have to go to the store anymore. We don't have to use huge recipes. Most of these are just add water and one or two simple items. How convenient, how awesome, how satisfying, right there in your Thrive Kitchen. This is the Thrive Bakery Line. This is our show. Thrive it up, baby! Back in the Thrive Kitchen with our peanut flour. We are just gonna play around and thrivalize our bakery line sugar cookie and turn it into a peanut butter cookie. Are you kidding me? Peanut butter cookie coming at you right now. Here we go, we got butter, put it right in the mixer. Turn the mixer on, we're gonna get it soft and light. All right, once you get it pretty much uh, mixed up, and this is just room temperature butter, okay? Scrape your sides, get the butter off of it so everything's gonna mix in nicely. Crack two eggs right into the bowl. All right, mix again. Okay, at this time, go ahead, sprinkle in the sugar cookie mix right into the mixer. Go ahead and pour your water in. And as you pour your water in, go ahead and put your peanut flour in. Mix until the dough completely comes together and all the ingredients are blended well. You may have to shut it and scrape the sides, just depending. Okay, now your batter's done and ready to bake. Spray the cookie sheet. I usually just do it in the corners. Boom, 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 boom. Put a piece of parchment down. And that spray will hold that parchment in place. Look at that peanut butter cookie right there. Continue to fill the pan. Bake at 325 if you want them light and chewy, and 350 to 375 if you want them a little crispier and a little crunchier. But these little peanut butter cookies I know you love. Going in the oven. Now my cookies are out of the oven. I've got some trayed up. What a great little treat to highlight peanut flour at a party, at a family gathering, at, a, at a, any type of a neighborhood get together, whatever you want to do youth group activities, just for lunch boxes. But this uh, peanut butter cookie is gonna be great using our new peanut flour. We hope you enjoy it. This is Thrivalize Sugar Cookie. Peanut flour added in. Thrivalize right here in Thrive Kitchen, going next to your home. Chef Todd, peanut flour, love it! We wanna highlight our 10 grain pancakes. Now these 10 grain pancakes literally have 10 or more even grains, different varieties of grains that'll give you a packed full nutrition every time you go to eat breakfast. So you can make pancakes, you can make waffles, you can make little hush puppies, you can make little donuts. This batter is universal. You can thrivalize this 10 grain pancake mix to really whatever your needs are. So you just have to play, open your can, get in the kitchen and make it happen. So first I'm just going to show you a quick and easy recipe. We're going to start with um, a banana caramel sauce to top our delicious waffles we're gonna make with our 10 grain pancake mix. 
We're gonna drain most of the water off these bananas. I've re let these bananas reconstitute for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna add them to a hot pan. We're gonna saute the bananas just slightly. We're gonna add Thrive Brown Sugar, Thrive Vanilla Powder, and I hope you're enjoying this vanilla powder because it is awesome. You get a little caramel made. Okay, once the brown sugar is melted in, your bananas are still intact, you're starting to form caramel. Then take some nice whole butter and just stir that right into the bananas. So as soon as that stirs in, you're good to go. Okay, now let's show you how simple and easy it is to make our 10 grain Thrive Pancakes. Really, it's not hard at all. Pretty much, it's just add water. But for the waffles, actually we'll do the pancakes first. So I have one cup of Thrive 10 grain pancake mix, put it in a bowl. Take your water, whisk it, and now you have perfect, smooth, ready to go pancake batter. That easy. Go ahead and put your pancakes down on the griddle. Okay, while those are cooking, we're also gonna make some waffles. So for your waffles, let's take our scrambled egg mix, water, now we're gonna add a little bit of uh, vegetable oil or whatever oil you prefer. Now we're gonna add our 10 grain pancake mix right into this. You can make waffles that easy. Now I'm gonna flip the pancakes. Look how golden brown, beautiful color. Look at the nice rice. Now there's a couple secrets about pancakes that I wanna discuss. Oh, those pancakes are beautiful. Now look, there's a couple secrets I wanna tell you about pancakes. Now when I first got married, my beautiful wife Michelle, she's in making delicious pancakes for of course me, because she loves me, and I came in and had the gall to come up to her and say, what are you doing to those pancakes? She was literally patting those pancakes down, and I'm telling you what, she's never let me live it down when I said, why are you patting your pancakes? Well, look, some of you I know like your pancakes a little bit hard and firm and rubbery, but these pancakes are really designed to be light, fluffy and airy. So when you flip your pancake, don't flip it again and never pat it down. Just a couple quick tips. All right, now let's take our let's take our pancakes off and get our waffles going. Look at those beautiful pancakes. Easy, simple. They're going to be bomb proof. They're going to be trustworthy every time right there our pancakes in your house in your home store every morning. Now let's make some waffles. We've got our batter ready to go. Let's spray our waffle pan just for easy, you know, stick-free waffles. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to take our waffle batter. We're going to add just the right amount, which is going to be almost to the edges, but not quite. So fill it up almost to the edges, but not quite. Shut the lid. We have our banana topping. You're welcome to top that with your pancakes. Look how delicious. After just a couple short minutes, boom. <laughs> Look at how pretty these waffles are. 10 grain pancakes turned into waffles right in your very own house. Now that waffle recipe will be on the back of the can, number 10 can, so you'll be able to, to uh, find that recipe easily. It's also gonna be on the website. So make sure you use waffle res waffles when you're using our 10 grains. They're not just pancakes. To go ahead, top our waffles with some of that delicious caramelized banana. Maybe a little bit of maple syrup for both pancakes. And I'm telling you guys, that's gonna be a delicious breakfast for every Thrive family and every Thrive household. This is our Thrive 10 grain pancake. Can't wait for you to try it. Thrive macaroons. Now, I love macaroons. They're delicious. These new Thrive macaroons are now gluten free. So now we wanna show you how you can thrivalize our macaroons. Yes, they make a great macaroon. Yes, you can dip them in chocolate. Yes, you can put things in the middle. Yes, you can add them to things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add them to our brownies. Now I know a lot of you consultants out there are using macaroons and brownies together to make what we would call Almond Joy. So we've created an actual recipe and putting it online as the Thrive Almond Joy. So we're gonna make that right now. First we wanna start with our Thrive Brownie Mix. Take our hot water, you want hot water for this, and add the hot water right to the brownie mix. Okay, stir that in until it's well blended. And presto, you have a delicious brownie batter. Okay, now 
All we want to do is scoop this out right into the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to add our, our macaroon mix again to hot water. Very convenient. Go ahead and stir in. Mix that macaroon mix right up. Okay, we're going to pour the macaroon mix right on top of the brownies now. Nice even strokes. And it'll just blend right in. We have almonds. Can't have almond joy without the almonds. We're going to sprinkle our, our almonds right on top. Okay, now we're gonna bake this for about 20 to 25 minutes. When it comes out, right when it comes out, we sprinkle little mini chocolate chips all over the top, and that's our almond joy. What a delicious treat. Now into the oven. So our macaroons, our almond joys, just came out of the oven. We've sprinkled with chocolate chips. Look how delicious, delectable those little babies turned out. Made with our brownies and our macaroons. Our macaroons now, new gluten-free macaroons, also GMO-free. And look at these little babies. Whether it's a macaroon or whether it's a thrivalized item, right here in the Thrive Kitchen, Chef Todd making it happen. Welcome everybody to the Ask Chef Todd segment here on Thrive It Up for Thrive April up. 2015. Chef, it's April. Can Can't you believe, believe it's that? April. April showers, bring my flowers. It's April, the year's flying by. A lot of great questions this month, but the winner Sorry, comes Grant. from Christine Dirksen. Sorry, Grant. At C Dirksen7 on C Twitter. C Dirksen7 on Twitter. Yeah, if you want to follow her, go ahead. But she asks, hashtag AfChefTodd, can I get the reconstituted sour cream powder to be close to the texture of real Cream. It's a doozy this it's month, a doozy. What are you going to do with this, buddy? Well, the answer is yes. You can get it close. And that's what she asked, close, she not asked identical. Close. She said yes, close. You can. you can get it close. Uh, let's just talk about powder for, uh, first. So, so any of our powder, butter powder, shortening powder, sour cream powder, milk powder, they're all dairy powders that have gone through the drying crystallization type style process. All these processes basically are taking the goodness, taking the water out and leaving the goodness. So you have to put the water back in and create the similar or close texture. So by adding a little more water, adding a little less water, you can do that. But also some tips. You can add some milk to the sour cream powder, which will give it a little more richness, a little bit more flavor. Okay. You can actually reconstitute the sour cream and fold in a little real sour cream or other sour cream that will give it similar or very, very close texture. Refrigerating your powders. Milk is always better after you've reconstituted it and let it get cold, let it sit in the fridge for at least three hours. Same thing on yeah. butter, same thing on sour cream, same thing on shortening. Don't just Cheese. add water. Cheese as well, too. Cheese is great the next day. Should be used the next day. Add your water, but allow it to, to basically come back to life over time in the refrigeration process. Then, grab your sour cream after you've got it reconstituted and whip it up really, really smooth after you've already let it rest in the mm -hmm. fridge for a certain amount of time. And I promise you, you can get very close to the similar texture. Then also, because it's sour cream powder, doesn't mean it's like this great, big, huge, bold flavor. If you want to add a little more flavor, hit it with just a pinch of salt. Of course, add milk during your reconstitution will help. And it doesn't have to be all milk. You can finish with a little milk. And then you, if you're going to do it for like a seven layer bean dip or for tacos, right. put a little bit of Thrive Chef's Choice All-Purpose Blend seasoning in it. Spice it up. A little cumin, a little chili powder, a little cilantro. Make the sour cream a little bit more flavorful. If you're going to put it on a baked potato, you know, fold in a little bit of butter into it. And make, make it good, you know. Um, drizzle it over your baked potato, put some seasoning with it, some chives, and it, it turns it into a delicious treat. But the sour cream powder is not only good for sour cream, but it's really good for add-ins to finishing soups, mm -hmm. to finishing sauces, to finishing casseroles. So that sour cream gives you that creamy, soury, creamy nature and characteristics for your pastas and everything else. So it's a great finisher too. Our sour cream powder is very delicious. It is very good. It is by sh for sure the next best thing 
to making your own sour cream right from milk and cream. Doing the culturing and everything else. Creme fraiche, those types of things. You take milk, you add buttermilk to, to, to the milk, let it sit out all night, all of a sudden you have creme fraiche, sour cream, very similar process. Right. So, so you can make your own sour cream, but we have sour cream powder, and again, it just needs that time to come back to life, be patient with it, play around with it is the number one thing. Open up your cans, start cooking and utilizing these things, and then for sure, put your recipes on our recipe website so that we can also enjoy your creations and your great finds with our great powders. Great answer, Chef. You Man. betcha! Woo! April, April brings May flowers right yeah. there. The flower of an answer. Woo! Awesome. Christine, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, thanks a lot, Chef Todd. If you have a question like Christine and you want to get it answered here on Thrive It Up. Ask Chef Todd. But what do you put before it? Hashtag. Hashtag. Ask Chef Todd on any of our social media channels channels Facebook Instagram Twitter you go ahead and uh, hashtag that question out chef Todd will answer it and maybe even select it to be answered here on thrive it up we will see happen. you next month thanks, thank you chef. so much for the question at thrive life chef that's his Twitter handle make it happen thanks chef guys Todd. see you next month we are now going to explore the wonderful world of the thrive brownie now this little brownie we have reformulated is now non-GMO, much cleaner label, still packing a punch with flavor, taste, and also execution. So it's always going to perform good, it's always going to be reliable. This Thrive Brownie is delicious. We're going to show you another way to Thrive Life. Yes, it makes a delicious brownie, but it also makes wonderful other tasty treats like the Almond Joy. Now it's going to perform just as good with making a turtle brownie. So for the turtle brownie, we take our brownie mix in a bowl, add our hot water to it, mix that up. Okay, once that gets combined, go ahead and add some of your caramel bits. These are little caramel bits. Add them right to the batter. Okay, just fold those little babies in. Now go ahead, take your pan, and we're gonna pour the brownies right into the pan, scrape your bowl out nice and clean, pour those brownies right into the pan. All right, just spread that out onto the bottom of the pan, let it fall where it's supposed to, okay? Now we're just gonna take some pecans, sprinkle pecans evenly over the whole brownie. Now that's gonna go in the oven 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes until desired doneness. When it comes out, you gotta be ready for your caramel sauce. We're going to take our caramel bits again, we're going to add them to a pan, and we're going to add Thrive Milk, reconstituted, right with the caramel bits. We're going to melt this down, and that's going to be drizzled right on the brownie. So now we'll put them in, back to the caramel. You just want to bring the milk and the caramel up until it's hot, and it'll all melt together and make a delicious caramel, little caramel sauce. Just bring the milk, and the caramel bits together until they completely melt and make caramel sauce. Look how delicious that's going to be when those brownies come out of the oven. We pour this all over the top, drizzle it all over the top, and you have yourself a turtle brownie. Super easy, super delicious. This is the Thrive Way, Thrivalizing. Man, I can't wait till those come out of the oven. Our Thrive Turtle Brownies are now out of the oven. I've poured that hot caramel sauce all over the top of that. Look at the texture. Perfect consistency. You're gonna love these Thrive Brownies. They're delicious. We want you to know that our Thrive Bakery line has a variety of delicious treats. But not only treats, savory breads, 10 grain pancakes, it's delicious. It's an everyday item. Thrive Foods is gourmet every day. Make sure you open your cans, use your food, and spread the joy with others. This is the Thrive Kitchen, Chef Todd. Thank you very much. Right here in the Thrive Kitchen, we finally have peanut butter. My snack of snacks, my crave of craves, my easy one-two spread go baby is here. Peanut flour. Now look, we launched a great peanut flour. It's so versatile. We could have launched a peanut butter. We could have just launched peanut flour. We chose peanut flour because we know all of you know how to thrivalize. So we're going to thrivalize the peanut flour. Now look, you can make peanut butter. You can make peanut sauce. You can make peanut cookies. You can make peanut cake. Whatever you want to do, you can thrivalize your peanut flour because you have it at your control, at your fingertips, right in your home store. 
All right, so first I just want to quickly demo how easy it is to make peanut butter from our peanut flour. Who's excited about peanut flour? I think you are. Yeah, that's right. All right, here we go. Peanut flour right in the bowl. A Little bit of sugar. The peanut flour is really not sweetened at all or anything, so you can add whatever sweetener you want. That's the glory of the peanut flour. You can add whatever sweetener you want, as much or as little as you want, okay? Thrive salt. After you get those three ingredients in, the salt, the sugar, and the peanut flour, simply mix those together so they're well blended. It'll also loosen and fluff your peanut flour. Okay, now we're going to go ahead, add the water. Mix that in. And also drizzle in the oil. And again, the great thing about using the peanut flour, you can make it as thick, as thin, as sweet, as fatty as you want. You can add more oil, less oil. You can adapt it and thrivalize it to whatever your needs are. There's a simple, smooth, silky, creamy peanut butter. Put this in the fridge for a little while, sets right up. Let it sit on the counter for a little while, sets right up. Nice, smooth, easy, creamy peanut butter you can have on your nice honey whole wheat bread right from our bakery line. Hope you enjoy this peanut butter, peanut flour as much as I have already, testing it, using it, and letting you thrivalize in your own kitchen, in your own home. This is Chef Todd Thrive Kitchen right here, baby peanut flour, what up? Welcome everybody to the featured chef segment here on Thrive It Up. Thrive It Up. And we got a great recipe this month. It comes from our good friend in Casper, Wyoming, Amber Mann. Amber Mann, you are correct. You know, she's been a consultant chef since May of 2013. Coming up on two years as Beauty. a consultant. She is actually, you'll like this chef, she is a member of the Founders Club of the Recipe Site. Wow. Congratulations, Amber, and congratulations on Chef selecting your recipe for the recipe of the month. Chef, go ahead. You were telling me just a minute ago why you loved this recipe. Well, this recipe at first seems kind of bold. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stuff a whole squash with lasagna. <laughs> Is that weird or what? But not really. Spaghetti squash actually lends itself very well to the flavors of tomato, to the flavors of spaghetti sauce and lasagna. It actually eats very tasty. I didn't know that. Um, a lot of times you'll see spaghetti squash served for vegetarian style meals with a spaghetti, spaghetti sauce right, right. marinara on top. So I really like this recipe for a number of reasons. Number one, it tastes delicious. Number two, it's very creative and innovative. She's going to, you know, we're coming up to garden season, and if you grow a garden, I love spaghetti squash, I love butternut squash, I grow those in my garden, and this is just an outstanding way to feed a whole family quickly with your vegetable and your lasagna and your meat all there. Tons of thriveness, sausage, hamburger, onions, mushrooms, red and green bell peppers, tomato powder, all kinds You've of... You've got it printed out right yeah, here, Chef. I'm looking, I'm looking down the ingredients list. I just all I see off. is thrive. 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 All thrive, I see thrive, is thrive. thrive. Except for the spaghetti squash, which becomes the vessel. So instead of baking it in your, your casserole pan, right. bake it in your spaghetti squash, the whole thing is now edible. Now, this is a big spaghetti squash, so two of these would easily feed my family of six. So when you make this recipe... I you thought you would say two of those would easily feed you and me. <laughs> easy now. One each. Easy. One each. One each. Bar Barnabas Prime and, and Chef Todd could easily finish this, these two off in one season. Guaranteed. But, thrive cheese, thrive ingredients, stuffed into to a thing for a family style meal. It's just very, very creative. I mean, you just take this, sprinkle a little bit of Thrive seasonings and Thrive blend on there. You dish that up. You get in there with a the fork. The spaghetti squash just comes off brilliantly. You have all the, the, the goodness of the lasagna part. It's over with. A little bit of Thrive, thrive uh, fresh whole wheat bread on the griddle. Done. Nice work, Amber. This is, this is awesome, Amber, man. And you know what? I bet the people of Wyoming love this. And I bet you're having parties and selling this. And, and it's going off. It's, it's just out of sight. So, so nice we work. could say, Amber, nailed it. Nice nailed work. it. Nailed it. Nice job on the uh, recipe this month. If you would like to be like Amber and get your recipe featured and chosen 
on the recipe site, have Chef Todd cook it, test it, endorse it. Uh, go ahead and get those recipes submitted on the recipe site so Chef Todd can uh, review them for the following month. So, nice work, Amber. Uh, we will see you next month on The Featured Chef. Thanks. <laughs>